This weekend, Trevor Reed is recovering at a hospital in San Antonio, but the politics behind Reed's release from that Russian prison is a story in itself. The Biden administration was privately negotiating this with Russia while publicly tightening the screws on President Putin for invading Ukraine. And the senior senator from Texas played a role in Reed's release. John Cornyn this morning from his office in D.C. on what he asked of President Biden. Senator, welcome back to the program here. Trevor Reed's parents called you uh, after their son, their 28 year old son uh, was released from that Russian prison there. What role did you play in advocating for his release? Every time we talk to you, you have the picture of Trevor behind you there over your shoulder. Well, that's right. Yeah, I, uh, that's a chart. Uh, Trevor, a young Marine who was uh, falsely arrested and accused and convicted in court in, in Russia. Mainly my role was very limited. It was try to raise the visibility of this issue, including asking President Biden to meet with Trevor's parents, which he generously did. And I think he was uh, moved by that experience and hopefully that helped bring Trevor home. Senator, I want to talk about the timing of all this. The, the Biden administration and Congress are, are tightening the screws on Russia, obviously, for the invasion of Ukraine. What, what's interesting about this that you pointed out uh, recently is that this happened this back channel negotiations were apparently happening uh, at the same time. How was all that done? Well, it's very important for two, uh, two uh, powerful nations to stay in communication with each other, even if uh, you're uh, in conflict with uh, each other, as we are, uh, through our support for Ukraine and, and uh, condemning, of course, as we have, and sanctioning the invasion of this uh, democratically uh, ruled country. Um, but it demonstrates the importance of, uh, of keeping lines of communication open at all times. And I know it, it, it may seem, harm, seem hard to conceptualize, but you really almost need to compartmentalize your brain and uh, deal with uh, problems you can while recognizing that there's going to be large parts of our relationship which are very much strained by this unjustified invasion of Ukraine. To your knowledge, how, how long had this been in the works? Did you get any indication of that? Well, we've been working on this, uh, supporting the um, Trevor's family and him for many months. And uh, a number of members of Congress got involved on a bipartisan basis and kept in regular touch with uh, Trevor. But I think probably what changed everything was when uh, President Biden agreed at, at long last to meet with his parents. And I think he was touched by that experience and uh, convinced to do this swap. Um, the Russians uh, were not doing anybody any favors. This is purely a transaction, uh, swapping a, a Russian criminal uh, who had been in prison here in the United States for Trevor, who had been unjustly accused and convicted. Senator, President Biden is asking Congress for an additional $33 billion to buy more ammunition, more military equipment for Ukraine. Um, where are you on this issue right now? Well, I'm for giving the Ukrainians everything they can use. Uh, both in terms of humanitarian assistance as well as uh, weapons. Today, I'm expecting the House to pass a bill that I introduced to try to facilitate that called the Ukrainian Democracy Lend-Lease Act. You may remember from your history that uh, it was the Lend-Lease Act that uh, provided uh, Britain and our other allies uh, military arms to defend themselves with, even when the United States was not involved in World War II. Are you concerned that, that this conflict could widen in unpredictable ways and we could be just, you know, going down the rabbit's hole here on another war that lasts for years? We don't know how long this is going to go on. It's really up to Putin. And unfortunately, time is probably on his side uh, because they use these attrition tactics where they flatten the cities and kill everybody in them. And uh, but uh, so far, uh, the Ukrainians are holding their own and we got to continue to supply what they can use and help train them to use even more sophisticated weapons in order to defend their country. And that's what we're all about on a bipartisan basis. Senator, before we let you go, I want to ask you about a seat you once held. The Republican runoff for the Texas attorney general position is uh, coming up May 24th. George P. Bush versus Kent Paxton, as you well know. Uh, do you plan to endorse either candidate in this race? I'm going to leave that up to uh, Republican primary voters to figure that out. Uh, that's really their call and not mine. But let's say I'm very, very concerned. Senator, we appreciate the time. Thank you very much, Jason.